The endoplasmic reticulum extends throughout the cytoplasm as an interconnected network of membrane tubules and sheets. Yet the ER is highly dynamic in living cells, as Gia Voltz from the University of Colorado at Boulder explains. If you just look at a, you know, a movie for a minute of the ER, it's surprising how much this ER is just shooting out tubules, retracting tubules, and it's putting all this energy into rearranging its structure, but we don't really understand why. Nor do we know much about the mechanisms of ER tubule dynamics. ER movements involve the microtubule motor proteins kinesin-1 and dynein, and are classified into two distinct types. In some cases, tubule ends, marked here by the ER protein STIM1, attach to the tips of dynamic microtubules as they grow and shrink, a mechanism called tip attachment complex or TAC dynamics. More commonly, however, ER membranes slide along a stable, pre-existing microtubule filament. Stable microtubules are often acetylated, and Volz wondered whether this modification might provide a platform for ER sliding. My collaborator, Kristen Verhey, who's at Michigan, published this paper that showed that kinesin-1 prefers acetylated microtubules. And I thought that's interesting because kinesin-1 is a motor for the ER, and could there be a connection between you know, these modified microtubules and ER dynamics? So the first thing we did was we just started making movies of the ER moving around and we quantitated how fast it moves, how often it moves by the two mechanisms. And sure enough, we'd see like 90 or 95% of the movements of the ER was by this really rapid sliding. And it's an amazing mechanism. You'll see suddenly an ER tube come out of almost nowhere and a huge amount of membrane gets pulled out and you, you almost wonder where did that membrane come from. In line with previous studies, the sliding movements were relatively unaffected by the addition of the microtubule depolymerizing drug nicotazole, whereas the same treatment eliminated TAC dynamics, supporting the idea that ER sliding occurs on a distinct subpopulation of microtubules. And then we started to also look at acetylated microtubules. And the first thing we noticed was the fact that these acetylated microtubules were really curved. They have really bizarre shapes. I had this typical image of microtubules where they radiate out, you know, like spokes on a bicycle. And all of a sudden I saw all these curly Qs and Ss and all these shapes that were going back and forth in every direction, looping back on themselves. But they can kind of explain why the ER goes in every direction. These would be good roads for the ER to move around because they're going everywhere. Boltz and colleagues, including Jonathan Friedman and Brant Webster, showed that sliding ER tubules followed these meandering microtubule tracks whereas TAC movements took a straighter route through the cytoplasm. Moreover, increasing microtubule acetylation with the drug trichostatin A boosted the amount of ER sliding, but had no effect on the frequency of TAC dynamics. Once we had confidence that the ER, most of its movements were happening on acetylated microtubules, you know, it begs this great question, which is why? <laughs> One idea we had was that there have been all these recent papers showing contacts between the ER and other organelles. The ER contacts the mitochondria, some contacts with endosomes, contact with the plasma membrane. So we had this idea that maybe the ER was using these small populations of microtubules to make specific contacts. And so do you find other organelles also on these modified microtubules? The researchers began by looking at mitochondria which contact the ER to facilitate phospholipid synthesis and calcium signaling. Both of these organelles are moving around. Are they always together or do they hit each other, transfer lipid and calcium back and forth and then come apart? How transient are the interactions? And so we started by making movies of the two organelles and I was actually quite surprised that the two organelles are tightly coupled to each other while they're both moving around. We never found a mitochondria that wasn't in contact with ER. Did these extensive ER mitochondria contacts occur on acetylated microtubules? It seemed like a good bet as, like the ER, mitochondria have proposed to move around with the help of kinesium-1. So we just did co-localization experiments between the ER mitochondria and acetylated microtubules and we found 75 to 80 percent of mitochondria, which were always wrapped up in the ER, were laying on top of the population of microtubules that were acetylated. This co-localization was unaffected by nicotazole, nor did the microtubule depolymerizing drug strongly affect mitochondrial dynamics, further indicating that mitochondria and the ER meet up on stable acetylated microtubules. I actually thought it would be a general phenomenon, 
if I looked at all organelles, they'd all be co-localized with the ER on a satellite marsupial. So when I actually went to look at ER endosome contacts, I thought that the endosomes would probably also be on a satellite marsupial. And that wasn't the case, actually. Although early endosomes made numerous contacts with the ER, these connections didn't preferentially occur on acetylated microtubules. Thus, the ER might slide along acetylated microtubules to search out particular organelles. I think it's using different populations of microtubules to form different contacts. One contact is the mitochondria, but there could be other contacts, like with the Golgi, and other contacts we don't really understand yet. But there are other ideas that I have also about why the ER moves around, but those are things that we haven't quite tested yet. Working out the precise function of ER sliding depends upon identifying ER proteins that specifically link the organelle to acetylated microtubules. We'll probably go back to some kind of in vitro system like Xenobus egg extracts and do purifications of ER proteins on microtubules to try to identify what protein could be involved in actually allowing the ER to specifically recognize kinesin-1 on the acetylated microtubules. Ideally, I'd like to specifically knock that out and then look at the effects on ER function. How much ER dynamics do you see? Do you still see ER mitochondria contacts? Do you still see trafficking through the cypatory pathway? It's sort of a direct way to stop the ER from moving around and to study why it's important. In the meantime, you can read more about how the ER and mitochondria meet up on acetylated microtubules in the paper by Friedman et al., published in the August 9th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.